I can do that. Do this. <laughs> Craig? Craig, Craig, get down. Told you, not Craig, it's Peter. Leave me alone. No, no, Craig. I'm Peter. Look, look, look. I know I know I know that I know that not playing Spider-Man yet has kind of taken its toll, but I really I really think you need to get down. I'm not Craig, I'm Spider-Man, right? I'm gonna do a front flip. I, I, I mean I'm doing a front flip! Right, I just go inside. People people pay a lot of money for the NHS and I really don't think they should waste an ambulance on you like this. Told you, go inside. Seriously? Yeah, go inside. Right, if you break both your legs, don't come I'm running to me. <laughs> Stupid, immature bastard. <laughs> yes, oh, for, are you alright? For fuck's sake, you uh, idiot. You are genuinely. Uh, right, you are. I'm Spider Man. <sighs> Craig. Oh, it's Peter. Should we just do the rest of the video? Uh. <sighs> okay. So recently, I've been fanboying over the new PS4 game, Spider-Man. Wait, why am I wearing these? I don't even need these. <laughs> Whilst I still cannot play Spider-Man since I'm still waiting for the money to come in, I've been fangirling for almost a year now, as Rosie will know. Hi. I wanted to do a Spider-Man themed video. So cast your mind back to six years ago. Fucking hell, it was six years ago. My life is going way too fast. The Amazing Spider-Man, starring Andrew Garfield as Peter Punk Parker. Okay, that's a different topic altogether. The film took a few different routes from the Sam Raimi trilogy, one being how Mr. Parker got his powers. The Raimi trilogy just shows a spider, assumed to be radioactive, bite Peter Parker and then he becomes buff, essentially. Now Andrew's interpretation shows Peter Parker sneaking into Oscorp Tower and finding genetically engineered spiders created by Richard Parker and Kurt Connors. Two mad scientists at Oscorp. One spider falls onto him, bites him, powers grow and he learns the responsibility of great power when Uncle Ben dies and he realises there's no need for vengeance. What do you mean that's not what he figures out? He's Spider-Man, that's the point of him. Uh, okay, 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 okay. That, that's not the point of this video. Peter then meets Kurt Connors and talks to him about the topic we're going to be discussing today. Cross-species genetics. Now, throughout the film, Dr. Connors' main ambition is to regrow his lost limb as he no longer wants to be the fabled hero, Stumpy Man. That was just a shit joke, wasn't it? I feel like that would be a really shit Stan Lee cameo. Anyway, whilst having a conversation with some of New York's smartest students, he puts forward this question. I long to fix myself. I want to create a world without weakness. Anyone care to venture a guess just how? Whilst one lad replies about stem cells, he's quite quickly shrugged off. Whereas Peter is the only one who can respond like this. Cross species genetics. person gets Parkinson's when the brain cells that produce dopamine start to disappear. But a zebrafish has the ability to regenerate cells on command. If you can somehow give this ability to the woman you're talking about, that's that. She's, she's curing herself. Yeah, you just have to look past the gills on her neck. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Kyle! I'll give you gills with my spider webs, you adolescent prick! Okay, so besides Peter's anger issues and his smarts, he made some relatively sound points about Parkinson's. <laughs> <sighs> Parkinson's is indeed caused by when parts of the brain that release and create the chemical dopamine begin to malfunction. Dopamine, of course, the chemical that makes you feel so good when you complete, you know, a hard maths test or you know, you hit the sack with your, uh, lady. Whilst he also explains this, Peter then suggests that a zebrafish has the ability to recreate cells on demand. And if you could somehow inherit this ability into the Parkinson's patient, the Parkinson's patient would indeed cure themselves. So now we've got an understanding of what cross-species genetics is, how would we do it? 
I have no idea. I'm not a biologist slash neurosurgeon slash mathematician slash all around smart guy. You can ask Rosie that yourself. However, I do have a few theories of my own. So cross species genetics is where one animal, let's say a lizard, foreshadowing, is taken and scientists read into its genetics of the lizard and look for the exact genome which allows it to recreate limbs on demand such as its tail. Then they would go on to remove that genome and splice it into our own genetics, therefore somehow giving us the ability to regrow missing limbs. Now if we've done that correctly, then theoretically, theoretically the human should, should be able to regrow limbs. Holy shit, it worked? Fucking hell, it actually worked! We can go to human t So oh, no, never mind. Never mind, he's a fucking lizard! God damn it! Okay, so by bioengineering, I believe that is the right term, we should theoretically be able to cross our own genetics with other animals. That is the foundation of the idea with a few side effects. Yeah, you just have to look past the gills on her neck. Yeah, all right, fuck off, smart ass. Whilst the idea of cross-species genetics would hold some major flaws, could it be our next evolutionary step? <laughs> eh, doubtful. Whilst real life research is going on into crossbreeding, there's definitely some ways that mother nature shows us that she does not want us fucking with our genetic structure in any way. Now we've already seen Mother Nature, ugh, we've already seen Mother Nature try and stop us from doing this when we have a look at a male donkey and a mare, a female horse for those who don't know. Now when these two breed, they create an offspring called a mule. Now this is very weird that we can see two species crossbreeding. Mother Nature has then pretty much stopped the mule from being able to procreate to end that genetic cycle like that. It's almost like inbreeding. Shouldn't happen. So, another part of cross-species genetics I never understood was how Peter Parker managed to stick to walls. Was it through adhesive abilities? I know that spiders have the ability to almost defy gravity in a sense because of either hairs or mucus on the legs. But how did this cross over into Peter Parker? <laughs> Okay, I need to get used to that swinging ability, okay. I mean, for example, Peter Parker's body to weight ratio is a lot higher than an average spider. Unless it's a camel spider, but I ain't going near those fucking things. Anyway, before my head explodes from these maths and science calculations that I'm not gonna do, I've found a channel that already can do it for me and has done stuff like this before. Kyle Hill is a great YouTuber that I've noticed recently. Every Thursday they release a series called Because Science, where they will answer the most scientific nerdy questions to fulfill all your nerds out there. He goes over all different scientific nerd-like questions, such as what is the tensile strength of Spider-Man's webs? Or how does Wolverine actually regenerate? He's a great part of YouTube that I regularly find myself binge watching most weeks to make myself feel slightly smarter when I inevitably argue with Rosie over why comics is scientifically cool. Hi. Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave this video here, but uh, before I go, one little secret. In this file, I have Stephen Hawking's genetic material. May you rest in peace. Perhaps if human trials go well, myself and everyone else could be as smart as he was. <sighs> Fuck it, how? <sighs> wow, I already feel ten times smarter. Oh, wait, it's just blood poison. Damn you, science! <sighs> Catch you guys on the next target. Oh. Oh! <sighs>